Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, September 8. Prime Minister Andrew Holness says Jamaica intends to deepen relations with the African continent by tapping into several available opportunities. There are indeed real prospects for exchanges in sports, culture, education, tourism and the commerce between our regions to improve economic benefits and enhance people-to-people -people connections. This would narrow the geospatial and psychological separation, reclaim our historical connections and celebrate ourselves as members of the African diaspora. Mr. Holness was addressing the inaugural Africa CARICOM virtual summit on Tuesday. The meeting was held under the theme, Unity Across Continents and Oceans, Opportunities for Developing Integration. The Prime Minister says the historic conference was a fulfillment of the dream of Pan-Africanists, such as national hero Marcus Garvey. As such, he says, a unified effort must be made to unleash the full potential of the African continent and diaspora in the CARICOM region. The National Water Commission, NWC, says work is well advanced to complete two major wastewater treatment plants in St. Catherine in short order. Phase one of the rehabilitation and upgrading project being carried out in Greater Portmore is on schedule for completion this month. It is being done at a cost of $670 million. President of the NWC, Mark Barnett, says the improved facility will increase revenue as new customers come on board. Reduce environmental footprint, operational improvement for sure, and of course, provide better service and improve our public image amongst the people within Greater Portmore. The scope of work includes upgrading the pumping station, rehabilitating the ponds, and constructing new reed beds. Meanwhile, work on the plant in Eltham Park is expected to be completed in November 2021. We have embarked on another $500 million budget to improve uh, those well, that facility and ensure that the treatment uh, effluent meets the regulation. Again, that work is about two months to complete and we expect on completion we would meet all the regulator requirements. Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries Floyd Green says government is prioritizing Jamaica's food systems to ensure food security. We are serious at the ministry that we reshape our food systems to make them more sustainable, more equitable, more inclusive, especially for our youth and women, more resilient against environmental challenges, more efficient in developing value chains, which can maximize the returns to our rural families and truly transform rural communities. Minister Green was addressing Tuesday's opening ceremony for the virtual workshop on catalyzing the sustainable and inclusive transformation of food systems in Jamaica. The island is currently carrying out an assessment of its food system, which started in mid-July 2021. It's being done through a collaboration with the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, the European Union, and the French Agriculture Research Center for Development. The Agroinvestment Corporation Agroinvest is seeking interested persons to take up more than a thousand acres of land at Tollgate in Clarendon. The lands have been reserved for a mango agropark. Marketing and Communications Manager at Agroinvest, Alicia Brown Forbes, says so far there have been 16 solid applications and more investors are being sought. What persons can, can lease is 50 acres, 50 acre plus. That's what we're offering. And if we see where persons are financially capable to manage more than 50 acres, then they can get more than 50 acres to lease. This is, this is development department that will offer business planning and business counseling services. We are offering technical support and advice, local and international food safety certification. There will be access to approved hot water treatment facilities to manage the risk of food flies because the food flies are subject to, um, to manga exploitation. Suitable locations for commercial mango production in Jamaica are in the parishes of St. Catherine, St. Elizabeth, Clarendon, and St. Thomas. Interested persons may visit agroinvest.gov.jm or call 876-923-0086. And finally, Jamaica's country pavilion at World Expo 2020 Dubai has been named one of the coolest out of 191 participating countries. The designation was given by ITP Media Group's subsidiary Time Out Dubai, which highlighted 13 standout pavilions.
During a recent interview with JIS News, Commissioner General of Section Jamaica Pavilion, Essie Gardner, says this recognition is impressive as this is Jamaica's first time participating in the expo with its own pavilion. I'm very thrilled that Jamaica was selected in this and presented in this article. We have been trying to make sure that even though Jamaica is a small island state, so to speak, that our voice is heard loud and clear across the world. The genesis of the pavilion is that Jamaica moves the world and connects the world. World Expo provides an international stage for countries to engage in cultural diplomacy, interact with the host country, other participants, potential tourists, trade partners and investors. The event, which was scheduled for October 20, 2020 to April 10, 2021, has been postponed to October 1, 2021 to March 31, 2022. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching.